What is up guys? Welcome to week 9 of the UPA. This week we are taking on a familiar rival, uh, the Why Not Why Nots. Uh, we played them in week 2 or 3 I believe. Uh, it was the game against the Mega Glalie where it crit our Entei with the Earthquake when we had Shookaberry. So this is going to be a rematch and uh, it's going to be post commentated because I didn't have this game at home. And this actually heavily affected the match. This is all on me, however this is on nobody else. Uh, this is my own fault for certain things in this match. I'll click play for you guys and we'll switch sides so that you guys can see my perspective. But um, basically what happened, and spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear this, skip about 10 seconds. But um, we lost this game. Uh, so you guys know right away the uh, the outcome of the match. As you can see, uh, Latias here has screens. And these screens were supposed to enable Entei to sweep my opponent's entire team. But sticky webs were up. And my Latias was supposed to have Defog, and while Defog plus screens might seem counterproductive, um, I was planning on bringing it specifically because I knew my opponent could uh, hazard stack me uh, with Toxic Spikes, Stealth Rocks, and Sticky Web through Masquerade. So I needed to get rid of those haz hazards before I started setting up my screens. Um, I, sw I volt switched into Latias uh, earlier on um, the first turn from Electros to be able to uh, get that uh, that defog off and when I got into Latias, I realized I don't have defog. I forgot to switch it uh, It was roost initially. I had a practice game against Mentz, and We decided well I decided that defog was absolutely necessary for this game I needed to get rid of hazards no matter what because I couldn't have certain Pokemon slowed down such as Primeape and Weavile It was very detrimental to, to the team. So as you guys will see here. This is a howl uh, roost war uh, between um, Salamence and Entei and I'm just gonna howl again here and at this point I'm like okay he can earthquake me it's fine I'm just gonna go for the e-speed uh, I believe on the mass grain uh, knocking it out getting rid of it and one of his uh, intimidators once and for all I think he's gonna go back into Salamence here and on this turn I switch out into the Electros and wouldn't you know it he goes for Draco and he gets a crit Without this crit, I would have been able to take the next Draco Meteor. If he had another physical dragon move, he would have knocked me out, but I'm pretty sure he didn't. So I go into Deancey on this turn, and as you will see, he goes for the Draco Meteor, and it fails. Uh, he didn't have anything else to hit my Electros with, obviously, because he went for Draco again. He didn't need to. So I'm going to switch out Deancey there on a potential Earthquake, go back into Latias, set, up, set back up my screens. Goes for a Whirlwind. That's fine. I go into Deancey. Uh, I know that he can have the Iron Head, I just stay in, I go for the Hidden Power Fire, of course, he has the Iron Head for the Ancy. why wouldn't you bring it? Doesn't make any sense not to bring it. Go back into Entei, uh, his Salamence is still alive, so I think I Howl here. Basically, that crit kind of mattered uh, on Electros, but what really mattered the most was the screen, uh, was the hazards being up for the entirety of the game. I am, I am able to get rid of his Salamence here, so we got rid of two Pokemon, which is cool, uh, but now Zam comes in, and Zam baits me to, uh, I guess, switch out, I don't know. Uh, as I go back into Electros, just to sack it off, it lives, of course, and he goes for a Scald and knocks me out. At this point, my only play, because Latias doesn't have any offensive moves, is to go into Weavile. He's on a Balloon, so I can't hit him with Earthquake with uh, Primate. I have to get rid of the Balloon. He goes for a Scald, gets a Burn. Okay, that's fine, whatever. Knockoff still does 44%. It's a good amount of damage. I'll go for another one. Uh, I'll hit his Skarmory that's incoming. And I'll be able to knock it down to 25%. Shed Shell doesn't have leftovers recovery, obviously. I have to get out of here because this thing is about to roost in my face. And I can't do anything about it. Uh, I gotta set up those screens again. He goes for Whirlwind once again. Gets me in a Primeape, which is awesome because I get the Defiant boost. And I'm like, okay, cool. I go for close combat, knock out his Skarmory. Awesome. Alright, every time my Primeape com comes in, I get the, the, the Defiant boost because of the webs. Because they're up. Awesome. We've all comes in. I'm just sacking it. He goes for the return, knocks me out. Cool. Now I can go back into uh, Latias under the impression that he is not choice. Uh, he goes for a quick attack. I set up, uh, I go for a roost, get back up my health. He's going to go for a bulk up. I'm going to go for a light, uh, a reflect right here. He's going to go for another bulk up and I'm going to go for the toxic to wear this thing down. So obviously he knows that he can't stay in for too long. Hits me with a return, doesn't do too much because I'm behind a light screen. Uh, I'm pretty much stalling this thing out. So he knows he has to switch. He goes into Alakazam. I go for Roost. And this is where the stall battle starts. He goes for Shadow Ball as I get back up my light screen. Now I can live another Shadow Ball. As it does 29%, I go for a Roost. I can never switch my Prime Ape in. Here he pulls a nice switch into his Tentacruel as I Roost again. And now he is going to attack me with Scald. Try to get a burn. 
and wouldn't you know it, he gets it again, <laughs> right on time, right on Primeape, and um, obviously this doesn't make a big difference in the grand scheme of things, because he would have been able to come in with Zam and Psychic me, um, but at least I would have had a little bit of health for Diggersby, I would have been able to play around the Zam a little bit, maybe break its Sash, find a way to play around it, but of course, uh, alas, our uh, Scald Burns, that's what happens. I go into Entei, just to break this thing's potential Sash with E-Speed, it's not going to matter in the end. You guys are going to see the end of this battle. Again, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it comes down to a turn where I go for Light Screen uh, as he goes for Shadow Ball, um, which was a dumb play as I'm trying to stall him out of Shadow Balls at this point. Goes for a Psy Shock. Now he's using his other PP. Uh, he only ever revealed Psy Shock and Shadow Ball, so I'm figuring that his other two moves couldn't hit me very hard. Uh, so he's just wearing me down. So the rest of this battle is pretty much nothing. So. The reason I'm showing you guys this uh, as a postcom, obviously, is because I wasn't home, but also because I'm going to stop uploading my UPA matches, because at this point we are 3 and 6, which is a terrible record. Um, a lot of it is not my fault, uh, but a lot of it is. I would say that um, the, the biggest factor in all of this is the team I drafted, and I know how bad of a team it is now. And Survive said it at the beginning of the season when he uh, when he was in the power rankings, the post-draft power rankings. They had me third or fourth uh, in terms of teams, and uh, in terms of drafted teams. And Survive said, I don't know what it is about this team, but something just doesn't look right. And he was absolutely right. It was the fact that one, my wall core was uh, quad weak wall core between Seismitoad and Chestnut. Uh, another one was that I had regular Deancey and Mega Slowbro in a league where you have to Mega Evolve on first turn. Slowbro lost its viability completely. Um, because throwing out Scalds while you're not Mega Evolved and then just switching out to get Regenerator is amazing. It's it's very, very useful. I explained that a little bit early, earlier in the season. So I had to trade Mega Slowbro for Mega Deancey and Deancey for Magnezone, but at this point I had two Electric types with Magnezone and, um, and Electros. So Magnezone only ended up coming to, I think, one game uh, the entire season up until now. So, uh, And this was one of the games where it would normally come because my opponent had a Skarmory. He traded away a Scizor that he had. Um, I don't know if I did a... Uh, I, I think I recorded a team builder for this game, but I'm not going to upload that either. This is just basically an explanation video, guys. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. There's no point in me showing you guys the rest of the games because they don't matter. Uh, they really don't. Uh, there's no, there is zero chance of me making playoffs unless every other team that is seeded higher than me loses all their matches from here to the end of the season, and we go a six and six record, and somehow with a, an amazing differential. Because again, we only got two owed this game, but that's not gonna happen. And if it does, then I'll bring you the playoff games. So I'm still gonna try because uh, throwing away games is not very nice to the rest of the players in the uh, in the league. Uh, if I if uh, if a player needs me to win a certain match to to proceed to playoffs, then I'm not gonna throw away that match uh, and give my opponent the win and uh, screw somebody else uh, somebody else out of the playoffs. That's not right. So I'm still gonna play the games, but I'm not gonna put in as much time. Uh, and prep into them, and I'm definitely not going to be uploading them from here on out, guys. Uh, season 2 of the UPA, I promise that my team will be so much better than what I drafted this time around, because if you look at the NBA, I drafted, a, I had a, a solid draft plan, and despite being sniped two or three times in the draft, I was still able to fi finish and get a rounded team, and despite um, despite having a forfeit in, in week one where we got a 3-0 victory and then haxing out our opponent in week two and then losing week three, this didn't give me a lot of confidence going into the future weeks. Like, I, I wasn't sure if my team was actually good or if I just got lucky up until now. But if you guys watched yesterday's battle, you will see that um, I played what I would consider phenomenal, phenomenally against Jose. And Jose was the top-ranked team tied with Jar. Uh, in the NBA going into week four. So I feel that my team is fits my play style nearly perfectly. And obviously I'm an OU player more than anything else. And I really like UU. So anything that I use below that is kind of like a, um, a minefield for me. I don't really know what to expect. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to play draft format when you're so used to... Uh, 
to Smogon play, especially when you haven't been playing for very long. So, uh, despite that, again, I have said despite like three times, but despite that, I think we have a very good team. Uh, and we can continue on forward in the NBA. I will continue to upload those matches. But right now, uh, I'm assistant coaching for like three people right now. I'm assistant coaching for uh, Eric in one of his leagues, for Rob in his uh, in the NPL, which you guys know about. Uh, I'm also assistant coaching for Jar and Rob at the same time in the GPC, which is a pretty big league on YouTube. Uh, it's actually one of the biggest. It's a very big deal. So... I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to the UPA right now, uh, seeing my record being 3-6, and six. so I'm, I'm going to kind of back off from it a little bit, and I want to focus a, a little bit more on other things on my channel, uh, especially future projects. Uh, I probably have an LP coming up with Rob. Uh, you guys will see, um, uh, hopefully, that comes out soon. Uh, I'm aiming for starting it next week. Hopefully. I still have to talk to Rob a little bit about it uh, because we're still working on graphics and uh, randomizing the game and, and stuff like that because I, I believe we want to do a randomizer. Uh, we might just play through the original game because it's a game that we neither of us have ever played before, so uh, it's going to be really cool. But it's going to be nice to have a co-op LP on the, uh, on the channel, just an LP in general. I wouldn't ever do an LP alone. Well, not right now anyway because I don't feel comfortable just going through a game and commentating and... and like dialogue and stuff so anyway um you guys are here for a upa match so that that's what i wanted to tell you we lost uh as you can see against the zam uh and uh the why not why nots and uh that's gonna be it for uh, for this week guys um i don't expect you enjoyed this video because it's a loss and it was a lot of me ranting if you did though be sure to leave a like down below uh subscribe if you want to see more content uh, if you are adamant about me continuing uh, uploading the uh, the UPA, even though I probably won't, uh, and if you're excited for the Montreal Habsols in the NBA with our 3-1 and one plus 11 differential record right now, um, Drew uh, is actually subbing in for, uh, for a coach that left. Uh, he took his team and... Um, we're really excited. I'm really excited to have him in the league. A uh, little bigness, which was the, uh, the uh, person... <laughs> Drew was the the one that got us into the UPA initially, so uh, it's really fun to have him uh, have him around in a, in a different league as well. So that's gonna be it, guys. If you uh, again, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.